Hi guys, and as promised on our um, Facebook page, you're joining me for a painting guide, this time for the HMS Tiger. Um, as you can see, I've undercoated her here just with a gray spray, spray on the side, spray, spray on the other side, spray, spray on the top, let it uh, dry out in the sun, come back and do that again. Now you will inevitably miss pieces. Now I'm gonna show you how to do that. Well, not how to miss pieces, but how to see what pieces you've missed by holding it up to your painting lamp. As you can see, the glowy bits are the bits you miss. The bits you missed. What can you do? It's always going to happen. So first things first, you've got to come back and you've got to find these bits and you've got to make sure they're painted in. And that's what we'll do first. So first thing I do is attach the um, ship to a painting container or a professional holder if you're one of those professionally people just so it doesn't fall, easy as that. Okay, there are her guns, oops. Those will get stuck on once I finish painting her. All right, so I am going to use the dry brushing technique a fair bit, and when I do that, these barrels will come off if they're stuck down. Besides, you can get to the deck a whole lot better here. Um, all right, so wood on paint, I use Vallejo from Spain. That's it there use white and in this video I'm going to start with the gray but that doesn't matter I'm going to come back with German gray to fill in all the spaces that we just saw we missed and then I'm going to use medium sea gray mixed with white um, and those are the three basic colors of whatever you want to paint um, for the models that I've used in the photography um, I've put a bit of separation in them uh, what I used here, for example, for the British ships, you can see quite clearly that that's a green. So that's a green grey. And I use that for the, the British ships on table for myself. So, and then I've got the German ships there painted in, in a base coat of grey. But, you know, it's just for separation. I've got, for my American ships, I have field blue. And that's the base colour. So when the three ships are sitting next to each other on table, you can see the German ships are grey. The British ships have a tinge of green and the American ships have a tinge of blue. And that's just for separation. It's not historical. It's just, um, it's anachronistic, but it's, uh, you know, it gets a bit boring painting solely in grey, I guess. Either way, that's the revenge. Can't wait to paint that one. Later video, perhaps. All right. So we're going to start by um, slapping on um, German grey. Instead of black, uh, I find that... Um, Black as a base coat sucks up all of the color that you have to do a lot of highlighting and a, a, with a lot higher degree of white in it to get that that color reflection back. So I always start with a with a light undercoat, usually white, but this in this case gray. And then we're going to go up and fill in all the gaps using the German gray. I'll do that now. So I use cheap and nasty brushes for filling um, and I use lots and lots of water always lots of water and it's always warm warm water seems to work best for me i think um, a little dab of water here on the palette and then there's our german gray i don't really need to show painters really too much about how to do this because you know obviously you've painted big blocks of stuff before just do it now the important thing is for you young painters or for you painters who have not done much in the way of battleships you can't go wrong Okay, these uh, these warships are grey. So, you know, it's if you can dry brush grey, then great. You know, you just start with this dark grey and then you work your way up with dry brush coats. And I will show you with dry brush coats how to get into those. So, the important part is, is getting into these detail areas um, because that's where you want these shadows to exist. So what we're really doing by painting this dark gray is by putting shadows into the miniature itself. Um, getting into the nooks and crannies, when you dry brush, all of those nooks and crannies will stay dark and then the lighter colors will be in areas that you can dry brush over, giving that impression of shadow, which is what gives the, um, the ship its gravitas all right, so yeah, it's important to get in these nooks and crannies in and around the towers, especially in the funnels, in behind them. 
underneath the boats because that's where the shadows are going to be. Yeah? And that's it. And I'll, I'll come back once this is uh, fully done. We'll move on to the next step. There we go. All solid. Um, there you go. So um, all the way through, all over it, the whole thing. Doesn't take much in the way of skill or talent to do that. Um, just a dirty brush that you don't mind destroying in the process. Uh, key important things, make sure that you get a solid coat down the side. Um, that is the strongest part of the ship for grey. So that's going to stay grey. Other parts of the ship will get painted over. So make sure you've got this, a solid coat down the sides. If you need to come back, come back, let that dry. All right, so now we're going to move on and we're going to do the gun turrets themselves. Uh, now, we have to be very, very careful with these things because, you know, it's reinforced as they are and um, oversized as they are for gaming purposes they are still fragile. Um, when we print these, we tend to print extra ones uh, because I have sausages for fingers and I tend to knock them and break them uh, and then use bad language. All right. So as you can see, it takes very, very little time at all to get these turrets done. Yep, and now, when all of those turrets are done and the ship is dry again, we'll move on to the next coat. So I spoke to you earlier about tonal differences uh, in the base coating that I was using. Um, and here is a practical example. We've got a beautiful Wyoming class and that was in the Vallejo field blue. Um, then the HMS Iron Duke, uh, as you can see, she's in field gray, which is a green color. And then, of course, the Koenig, which is in um, Panzer Grey. And you can see that there's slight tonal difference um, in the base coating. So the British ship looks a bit greener. The uh, American ship looks a bit bluer. Um, and that's it, you know. Um, that's the only real tonal difference. So they're all grey, you know, but... Um, one is a greener gray and one is a bluer gray than just gray. Uh, just so, uh, I don't know, as a painter, you're painting the same color over and over again. I don't know, different options for you to choose from, but uh, we're gonna keep going with the, the lion and we're gonna keep going using the German, what I used as the German technique, which is the Panzer gray as the base coat. Um, but there, there's the difference. So as the name suggests, dry brushing really does mean that the miniature must be dry. Not just dry, I mean bone dry. You don't want the paints to mix. <clears throat> Often with uh, miniature painting, you know, you want some blending to occur. Um, that is not the, the case in, in uh, dry brushing technique. So we've got some light gray and some of the dark gray we were using earlier. All I'm going to do is mix those two together to get a transitional color and then I'm going to dry brush that now all of the top part most of it will be covered in deck so for that I use desert yellow and then I highlight with Iraqi sand Um, so you don't need to worry too much about dry brushing those big surfaces because you're going to paint all over those anyway. Uh, the same goes for the boats. Um, essentially what you're looking for is the side of the ship and those different tiers. In there there's a little tier. You want to catch that. Um, so yeah, so most important thing is to make sure this is bone dry. So in Australia, all you do is you go outside, find a bit of shade, leave the rock on a, sorry, leave the ship on a rock and go make a cup of tea, then come out and get it and it'll be bone dry. Um, otherwise, I don't recommend using a hairdryer because you might warp the miniature. All right, so you will notice there's, there's a separation line here at the front because I am using the base model 3D printer um, just so you guys can see the results of a base model print. There you go. 
And that will be a issue a bit later on when we paint because we don't want wash to go into that line to make it look like there's a separation because that separation doesn't exist on the actual ship. All right, on to the dry brushing part. Ooh, oh yeah, so I am a bit of a painting animal and uh, I tend to memorize which um, shades I'm using by painting on my thumb. So I know which shade I've done and what shade it is because there it is there. As you can see, I've already done one little bit of a dry brush. So you wipe most of the paint off the brush and then you just like you're dusting for fingerprints because we've all done that before. And that's how you start and you just go over the whole ship. Backwards and forwards, quick motions. And as you can see, all the do all it's doing is bringing out the detail. And we're going to do that over the entire ship. Yeah. No, obviously we're not trying to win any painting competitions here. We are just trying to get a miniature onto the table for the purposes of gaming. Um, I'm sure there are people out there who will be producing amazing things and we can't wait to see them. Please post them on the Facebook page. Um, looking forward to seeing your fleets on table, that's for sure. But yeah, this video isn't to teach you the very very best way of painting a model ship it's just showing you uh, probably what is in my opinion probably the easiest way of getting your minis painted and on table um, I think having the occasional miniature that's probably going to be a flagship or something like your flagship uh, having a go with that to make it look spectacular that might be fun but uh, in general, you don't need to do too much. All right, so I'm going to go uh, away again and then come back with a very dry brushed miniature for you to see. Um, just with everything, you've got to remember that this is paint. So if you make an error, get the shade that you were working with before the one you're currently working with and then paint over it and let it dry. Uh, you know, I am not an excellent painter. I am just an average painter with lots of experience in being average. Um, so the two most important things is patience um, and the preparedness to come back and fix your mistakes. Um, the great thing about paint is it's very forgiving. And anytime you make a mistake, you can then go fix it up. You know, you just, it just takes more time. The more mistakes you take, uh, more mistakes you make, the longer the miniature will take to paint. And that's, that's it. And as I said earlier, it's grey, people. Um... Gray with a yellow deck. Uh, yeah, it's not that hard. No, I'll show you how to do the, the extra bits of detail. You know, the white guns, the uh, silver barrels, the painted um, painted boats, and those sorts of things. If you want to go higher in your level of detail, um, I think for when you first get your game. And you want to put it straight on the table, get two colours of spray can. That's my opinion, and I may be crucified for being heathen, but um, grab yourself a light green-grey or a, um, sort of a dark grey. Spray all of one fleet in one can and the other half of the fleet in the other. 
and then put them on the table and um, play some games. And then you'll work out, out of all of that, what your favourite ships are, and those are the ones you probably want to give a really nice job uh, and spend a bit more time on here. All right, so I'm just gonna keep doing this until I'm really happy with uh, the dry brush, and then we'll move on to the next, next coat. So it's the same again for the guns. Make sure you don't have too much paint on your brush. And you're just dusting for fingerprints, like you were taught to do in primary school. Just be gentle. I mean, these are battleship guns, or battle cruiser guns, sorry. Um, so they're a little bit more robust than some of the other ships' guns. We have taken steps to make sure that these um, guns are strong enough to survive this, but um, you know, you might be a stronger painter in your technique. All right, so there we go. There is one coat and one coat only. And already we can see that they're shadows. Um, these are painted shadows. They are the impression of shadow, not the actual shadows um, that we are adding in. Uh, and all we can do now is get more of the light gray and less of the dark gray and we're going to do that one more time making sure that the paint is mostly off my brush otherwise I'm painting rather than dry brushing and again I'm not worried about picking up the deck formation what I'm trying to do is grab these little um, box like structures they're all very important to the ship. I'm sure they all have very important names. The great thing about this dry brushing technique is it will actually catch the top and the bottom of the side superstructure and not the middle. Again, give us, giving the false impression that the large ship is casting a shadow, which it isn't because it's not a large ship. It's a tiny little plastic miniature. As you can see, I am not really painting this ship. I am slapping it over and over again with a brush. So the idea is that now you should get a little bit lighter and then one more pass, you should get a little bit lighter again. And then we can come back and do an actual edge highlight using the brightest of the um, grey colours. And it will get lighter and lighter and lighter. Still retaining those lovely shadows though, to give the gravitas, which is what we're looking for, isn't it? It's what battleships and battle cruisers should have, gravitas. All right, I'll do that and I'll come back and show you. All right, so now having done a lot of dry brushing, uh, I'm now just going straight for the raw light gray color, getting rid of as much paint as I can. And now I'm just looking at the parts that we're gonna keep. So I'm gonna get the top and bottom again straight downwards this time. So this is the, in theory, where the light is touching on the surfaces, on the edges of the surfaces of things. Because all we're doing is giving the impression of size, aren't we? So downward rather than upward and downward. And as you can see, I am not using any particular care whatsoever. These models are going to survive this process. You don't need to worry.
downward strokes. The whole idea here is to catch the edges of things. And it looks messy, and the end process should actually make your ship look like it's made of concrete. Uh, and if you can quite clearly see that your ship is made of concrete, then you are at the end of the dry brushing process. So you repeat this process again with the guns, so they're all universal color. And I think that will do it for dry brushing. Plenty of different layers of um, shadow in that. Um, most of what we have done, we are going to paint over. I know it's depressing, but that's uh, unfortunately the truth of the matter. Gorgeous. All right, so now you have to go let that dry again. So go put it in the shade on, uh, under a tree on a rock somewhere for five minutes. If you're in a country that begins with A, like Africa or Australia, um, otherwise you'll have to find another way of keeping it dry. But it has to be bone dry before you move on because the deck cannot mix. You can't have the gray and the yellow mix, otherwise you're gonna end up with having to paint over and over and over again the yellow back onto the deck and that's what we want to avoid. Alrighty, so I will see you back for yellow. So at the same time as I uh, sprayed Tiger, I also sprayed Blucher. And um, as you can see, there is the base coat spray on the Blucher and then you can then see that um, Tiger has its shadows built into it because of the dry brushing process. Um, yeah, so when it comes to dry brushing, uh, I'd be watching, usually listening to a podcast or watching some football or something like that. Um, and I do sort of seven ships uh, all at once to get them all to this stage because that's the easy part and uh, it's just time consuming. Um, and then you can move on to detail afterwards. Alrighty, so I didn't use any water on my brush before because it was dry brushing. Um, but the most important thing when you do do actual painting is to make sure that you have a nice tip on your brush and that you don't let the paint dry on your brush. Okay, so there we go. So I've done the nose or the bow. Um, it, hopefully you can see there that there is some gray underneath and this will need to be done twice. But the most important thing is those gray boxes that we dry brushed before um, are still gray and they haven't got paint on them. I managed to put some paint on some of them and then I licked my finger and I licked the paint off. Uh, so there you go. The ones that the paint don't come off, you have to come back and paint them again using gray. Um, and I will probably have to do that at some stage during the process. Um, but yeah, so there you go. So I'm going to go and do a second coat over this now. Being very, very careful not to paint over anything I've already painted over. As you can see, using lots and lots of water, it is better to do two coats than it is to do one. There you go, put some on the side, lick my finger, rub it off. Make sure you can do that. Vallejo paints are water-based and they're not toxic. So, you know, I ain't gonna kill myself. You should think about that too, when whatever paint you use. Should have some telephone hold music or something. So just very carefully getting in and around the detail. And if I make uh, a brush mark on some of the detail, then just lick it off. If you can't lick it off, then you're gonna have to just leave it using that important patience that we spoke about earlier. All right, and then, so we'll start on some of this. Doesn't matter so much about this um, raised circle bit. Of course, still using technical terms here. 
because the gun will partially cover it. What matters is uh, this triangly bit. Does not get painted in. So yeah, the more fiddly the deck, the um, more of this single brush stuff you're going to have to do. So this is not a phase where you can watch the football. You really do have to watch what you're doing. Yep, all the way from one side of the deck to the other, and then you've got to do a second coat on it once it's dried. And as I say, you've got to make sure that you're maintaining the tip on your brush. I use a watery mix of the paint here to keep that tip on my brush and uh, make sure that the paint does not dry on the brush because when that happens, you lose the brush and you lose your clarity of your, um, your strokes. So, All right, so there you go. There's one pass on the front. I will now go paint some more in and I'll come back to you then. So I'm a little bit further along, but as I said, sometimes you're gonna paint over those things and you can't wipe it off. So, here we go. So I've made a mistake and I've painted over this one. I'm now going to correct that. There we go. Painted it back in. Uh, and don't forget, we've got a wash process to go, so it's not ideal, but it's um, it'll still have a shadow underneath it. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about too is brushes. I'm not using the world's best brushes here. I'm deliberately using ones you get with magazines because I am not trying to show you how to be the world's greatest painter. I'm just trying to show you how to get it done. All right. See, so yeah, I'm a bit further down with the decking. Uh, and there we have it. Um, the whole deck is done in. Uh, I made some mistakes and had to come back with some paint and paint back over some of the grey. But overall, I think that's a pretty good looking deck. Um, definitely have to come back in some places and do a second coat. In other places, the coverage has been good. I've come back um, while I've been painting it. So another thing you might want to consider is if you can pre-plan it would be just to paint the deck in and then paint the little nodules on the deck um, in a dark grey and then come back and try and edge height land them if you have the, the brudge to do that. Okay, so if you are not interested in winning best painted at your next tournament or convention, my advice to you is to skip this step put the wash on and then connect the guns. But if you are just interested in putting the boats on, mix a bit of white with the Iraqi sand edge highlight color. So you get a sort of creamy color. And then we're going to sort of edge, sort of paint. Those boats in. So I'm trying to use the flat of the brush There we go. So that's the boats taken care of. A little bit of white paint there, I have to fix that up. So now I'm going to come back again with a different colour and I'm going to paint in the boats, one or two of them anyway, a different colour. So there's a bit of colour variation on the ship. And that's it then, it's then washing. And um, after that, it's connecting the guns. Mm. You'll be happy to know we are almost there. All right, so these are the two washes I've been using for the ships. 
Rikon Flash Shade for the German ships, and I've been using Seraphim Sepia for everybody else. Uh, just one coat. I know it goes on pretty thin, and you think, ah, oh, could probably go again. Don't. Just the one coat does the trick. Um, yeah, so here we go. Um, so first thing first, the most important thing is to give it a good shake. And then be careful when you open it because it tends to go absolutely everywhere. All right, so as you can see, I have changed out my water because it was full of paint. And now washing, it's a different thing altogether. Make sure that edge highlight is dry before you go doing this. Well, I'm just gonna paint on a little bit of water first. I'm sure there are millions of people out there going, don't do that. But, um, you know, you're free to do as you please when you paint your own gear. I just tend to give it a bit more wetness because it's a dry country. We have a dry atmosphere here, so I want to help the wash to get into the nooks and crannies. All I'm trying to do here is give the impression of wood. Since I'm painting on just water, So yeah, once again, water's going on first, then a drop of the wash. And as I say, the, the water's going in just to help it get into those nooks and crannies. I find it actually helps it pull correctly as well. But if you're in a place that has a wet, wetter atmosphere, then that might be, might be different for you. And as I say, this is one way of painting your ships. It doesn't have to be your way. All right, so now, with that join line that I was talking about earlier, this is where we've got to be careful. We're going to stay out of the join line. And we're going to paint the wash in. Just like that. As soon as you hit that join line with the wash, the join line will fit with, fill with uh, the wash and then you'll end up enhancing the fact that the yeah, nose has been joined. Okay, so I decided against actually repainting the boats. I was pretty happy with them. So what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to put a bit of watery wash inside the boat. Just like that. And that, people, is almost the end. Once that dries, we can then go on to guns. So at this point, as you can see, those guns have been dry brushed. So if you are not interested in making 
excuse me, making uh, the Tiger your centerpiece of your fleet, then perhaps you could just glue, the, glue those on and be done with it. Um, or um, we can do a little bit more on the guns before we glue them down. As I say, you could paint some of the boats, but I'm kind of happy with how they are. Um, and then we'll go on to do some little extra touches, um, you know, to make the boat pop a little bit more. Okay, back for that. So finishing touches, as you can see, the wash is almost completely dry. We've got that lovely worn look on the surface of the deck. Okay, now I'm going to paint in the funnel tops. Because they're black. Because they're hollow. Alright, so... On to the second one. And then the third one. And there you have it. Three tab um, turret. Sorry, the smokestacks are all done in. There we go, the funnel tops are done. And as you can see here, I've done black on the top of the turrets. Um, and then next is just to glue them in. You just put super glue down on those um, circly bits. That's another te technical term. Um, and then you can glue them facing any which way you really want. Um, but if you want them not to get knocked off, then I advise putting them just straight forward and straight back. Um, you know, it does look nice when they're firing a broadside, etc. Um, yeah, you work it out what works best for you. All right, and then, um, so I'll finish this up. I'll then hit it with Tester's dull coat and um, you're ready to put on the table. <laughs> 